Welcome to the Political Ferret Show and especially welcome for all the newcomers who come over from some of my Muslim focused videos. So it looks like you want to hear a little bit more and today I am gonna tell you about my first talk with a real Salafist that was some years ago and convinced me that Islam is not exactly a religion of peace. And this guy was an Egyptian and a Salafist with this little beard thingy and, and old stuff. So if you don't know what Salafists are, Salafists, it is a movement from the late 18th century. Their idea is, of course they say they are way older, but they are really not. So the idea is that they want to go back to the time of Mohammed because to live like Mohammed you have to reenact pretty much exactly the situation of Mohammed so without internet and electricity and floating water and all these thingies so if you want to say that they are conservative well I would say that the most conservative Catholic around looks against them like a futurist and wants to go to space or something like that. They are ultra 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 conservative. So okay, fair enough. If you want to do that, find a place on earth where you can live pretty much the stone ages. There are some places around and a lot of them are in the Middle East. So they want to go back. They want to get all rid of this evil, evil Western ideas. I mean Boko Haram pretty much means against this Western evil stuff and against all this technology and new things. So they want to go back to the Stone Ages. And I did not know that. Or I thought okay that's the same thing as Flat Earths. You find some of them but, but they just want to troll you and they there's nobody around who really wants to live that way. So I met this guy and I discussed that and he said, no, no, we really, really want that. And I discussed some of that and I'm quite a fan of the uh, Egyptian mythology and of the history and so on. And I said, okay, but you as an Egyptian, you have so much more in your history than Islam. And he said, what, for example? And I said, man, I mean, Pyramids, anyone? And he said, Pyramids? <laughs> no man did build the pyramids. And I said, What? And he said, Allah put them there. I said, What? And he said, Yes, yes, Allah put them there. I said, What, man? And I said, Yeah, we did not build them. I said, yeah, of course not, but the Egyptians before. You mean the pagans? Yeah, of course I mean the pagans. I mean the pharaoh guys and so on. Uh, they, don't, they, they, they never did something. They were primitive people. We did come and build this stuff. So these guys that we know from in scripture from inside the pyramids and so on, this was not the makers of the pyramids. Oh no, it was Allah because these guys who came to Egypt and killed everyone did not build the, the uh, pyramids. So it could not have been the pagans. The funny thing is um, the cleric, the Muslim cleric in, in Egypt said, yeah, we are now a major Muslim state and we have the task given from Allah to protect this because they are monuments. They don't have to do something with uh, ancient gods and so on. They are monuments from the people past that were judged uh, by Allah already. So these things are okay. I would say these things are okay because they bring a lot of money in from tourists and without that they would pretty much burn them, would pretty much destroy them as they destroyed for example the Buddha statues in uh, Afghanistan or they destroyed in Syria all this wonderful car Babylonian carving and, and so on and so on. They destroy everything. And they destroy churches in Europe right now and nobody cares but um, I also do not care a lot I have to say but well that's one of the funny stories and we went on and we went on but but this was my highlight to say no the pagans did not build the pyramids they, they could not do something this was primitive people and then these guys came and destroyed everything and then they became really really uh, primitive and then he went of course on that the Jews train sharks for attacking tourists in Egypt and uh, oh my god Talking with a flat earther makes more sense than talking with this guy. And 
in the end I said, okay, can, can we just agree to disagree? Can, can we just say, okay, you believe your stuff, I don't believe it. And he said, no, no, you have to believe that or you have to face the consequences. And you will see this was the time of Mursi. We show now this unbelievers because you have the death penalty for high treason too. We don't have that, so as a side note. And everyone who is not a Muslim is guilty of high treason in Egypt and we will kill each and every one of them. Well, this guy right now can't visit his home country because if he would visit his home country, they would put him in jail. So he is now here in Austria and lives a comfortable life. What a nice situation. We need absolutely more people who can't not go to a pretty fundamentalist Muslim state because they are too fundamentalist for them, so they have to stay here. Wonderful situation. Well, this was my waking call, I would say, back then, and since that I went to and got a Quran and did read the Quran. And then I understood that because I read the Bible before that and I still like some other, I, li I like the Dao Te Ching for example. The Dao Te Ching makes way better reading than the Bible and the Quran. The Quran makes not a bad writing, I have to say that. But if you read this stuff, you understand that these people do exactly what they are told by their book. And there is this old game. Everybody gets his own holy book opens a page, points a finger to it, does what is is told there and the last one who goes to jail wins. This is the nature of holy books. They are so old and so ridiculous and so out of date that you would go to jail for every third thing that stands inside there. And for Islam I would say the rate is even higher. So... Tell me if you want to hear more, I have some really really funny stories about that or is this just rambling for me or tell me in your comment section. Tell me your favorite story that you have, have experienced with some real believer. It can be from other cultures. I really want to hear one story of a guy who is really 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 into Shinto and tell something in the like of that. Something that is so far out and so crazy. Is there one Japanese guy who is so out there to come even closer would really wonder, I guess not. So thanks for listening, like, share and subscribe, stay tuned, tell me what you think and have a wonderful day.